Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week of July 30th. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out bi-weekly articles that look at hottest comics and trending comics. This week, we got trending comics, which is a more curated list written by Matt Tuck. And it's a very interesting one due to the fact that it's coming off of the heels of San Diego Comic-Con. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, it helps for the channel doing those things. I'd appreciate it. But let us get into this video here today, of course. Like always, I will put a link in the description if you guys want to do your own reading. But I will break it down for you here. And coming in at the number five spot is actually a cool book to see on the list. Timeless number one, the Humberto Ramos variant, new to the list this week, now sitting in the number 100 slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this would be the first cover appearance of the character Miss Minutes, of course, a character who made their debut in the Loki TV series. And when this book came out into the market, this one was absolutely on fire. Now as to why this book is starting to trend again in the market, well, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we're coming off of the heels of San Diego Comic-Con. We got a lot of announcements with with, you know, Avengers Kang Dynasty, Avengers Secret Wars, things like that. And a lot of people have been sort of pointing back to this book right here as being, you know, maybe something that has a broader significance to the overall direction that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going in. Now, on top of all that, we know that we're getting Loki season two next year. And I think it would be a pretty safe assumption that we're going to see Miss Minutes in that season two. And I think a lot of people are thinking, hey, I'm really excited about the new phase five slate for Marvel Studios. I'm looking forward to Loki season two. I got to get that Miss Minutes first cover appearance. And this is definitely the one to get. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look here at the 9.8s. 410 on the census. Fair market value has this at 180. 30 day moving is only 104 though. So you can see another incident where, you know, now where the floor price is and thinking about, you know, the potential for a book like this, people are feeling like this might be that right time to jump back in on this thing. I mean, when it originally came out back in February of 2022, you could see that the 9.8s probably in that pre-sale were selling around that $261 range and where they are today, you know, at that $100 range, you know, this is a book that has had that 50% correct. So 101, probably not too bad of a price if we're thinking that, you know, Miss Minutes could be a cool character for the future and that this book could have significance uh, later on in the Marvel Studios Kang storyline. On top of all that, this was actually the book that teased the Miracle Man thing. So there's a lot of touch points to this book as being significant sometime in the near future. And of course, 2022 book, not going to see it slab to the low grade, but when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, typically you can find them being sold around that $40 and $50 range. All right, let's go on now to the fourth hottest trending comic of the week. And the fourth hottest trending comic of the week is another one that you know seems obvious as to why it would be trending but this one right here is invincible iron man number one new to the list now sitting in the 98th slot and what is the significance of this well of course this is a book that came out in 2016 written by brian michael bendis and would feature the first solo series for the character known as ironheart otherwise known as riri williams now, i'm sure you guys all know by now riri williams is set to make her appearance in the black panther 2 wakanda forever film uh in the next couple months here i think that film releases in november and then next year, it's already been announced that Riri Williams is going to be getting her own Disney Plus show uh, appropriately named Ironheart. So a lot of people are thinking about those Riri Williams keys. Of course, it's Invincible Iron Man number nine. That is her, her first full appearance as the character. But this one right here has quickly become sort of the next best thing, as I would like to call it, as far as, you know, collectors and what they're looking to get for the Riri Williams character. It's kind of great to see her on the cover there. You know that this is her first solo series. Solo series continue to be very popular amongst comic book collectors, especially within the speculation market. So it makes a lot of sense as to why people are getting excited about this character. We know that she's coming in Wakanda forever. We saw her in the trailer. So that appears to be why this book is moving this week. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the 9.8s. 1300 on the census. Fair market value suggested to be at that $95 range. 30 moving, kind of right in line, 102. But basically where we are in the state of the market, that is definitely a pullback from where it once was. You know, back in 2021, we could see that there were some high sales for this thing at the $250 range. Uh, this one has had a pretty volatile journey. I mean, anything that is going to be a modern comic book is always going to have a little bit of volatility in terms of the numbers for this thing. But, you know, kind of where it's selling right now, you know, at that $100 price point, here's a couple that went under $100. feels like a really good buy-in for this book. I mean, $100, 9.8 for a character that, you know, you might really like. Doesn't seem like a bad bet, in my opinion. Uh, and then, of course, being a 2016 book, not going to see it slapped at the low grade, but when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, typically they sell around that 25 to $40 range or so. All right, let's move on now to the third hottest trending comic of the week. And the third hottest trending comic of the week is one that has been, you know, on this list many times before, a book that makes sense to why it's trending. This one right here is Submariner number one, new to the list, now sitting in the 80th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book written by Roy Thomas that came out in 1968. That would be the big premiere issue of Submariner number one. Now, 1968 saw a lot of great 
first issues for, you know, the big characters in Marvel comic books. We're thinking about Iron Man, Silver Surfer, Captain America, etc. And one of those characters would be Submariner number one right here, which is the book you see in front of you. And this has also sort of become one of the more go-to books for the Submariner character. Obviously, Submariner uh, made his first appearance, you know, in the Golden Age, and nobody really can afford any of those Golden Age books. So people look to those next best things. Fantastic Four, number four, is the first appearance of Submariner in the Silver Age. But that book has really, really shot up uh, to a point where not a lot of people can afford it. So this book right here, Submariner number one, seems to be the go-to book for a lot of people who are either specking on the Submariner character or just fans of the Submariner character. Of course, we saw that Submariner is going to be making an appearance in the Wakanda Forever film. It seems like he's going to be the prime antagonist, at least for most of the film, until, of course, we get some reveal of a mysterious villain pulling the strings behind the curtain. But, you know, we won't go into spec town just yet. Uh, but this right here is one of the great issues for Submariner. I I think that these big premiere issues are some of the best to collect. It's a satisfying number one first solo title in a lot of cases for these characters. A very satisfying co cover, so I totally get why people would want to jump on this thing. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. Uh, there are 72 9.8s. Fair market values suggest them to be the $14,000 range, although one year moving was $17,850. 90 day moving was actually $16,800. So, you know, still a book that is definitely selling uh, pretty decently in those rare high grades. Let's take a look here at some that have sold recently. 8.0 has 361 in the census. Fair market value is 950, although 30 day moving is is a thousand dollars, and that's a pretty good sign uh, for a book, you know, in this current market that you know is basically still selling around where it was selling for, say, you know, six months ago or so. I mean, certainly, like most books, this had its peak values in 2021 at the fourteen hundred dollar level, but we can see that the floor is holding pretty steady at that four figure level of a thousand twenty. Obviously, I think with the excitement of the trailer, people are still believing in this character, still excited about uh, Namor showing up uh, down here at the four point oh hundred fifty five on the census fair market market value is around that $400 range, 30 day moving kind of right in line to that $400 range. And then when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, uh, I would say that $400 is pretty much the cutoff point. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest trending comic of the week. And the second hottest trending comic of the week is one that is exciting to talk about due to the X-Men factor. But this one right here is Uncanny X-Men number 244, new to the list, now sitting in the 65 slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is a book written by Chris Claremont that came out in 1989 and would feature the first appearance of the character known as Jubilee. Now, why is this book uh, hot this week? Well, of course, we know we got a lot of exciting news about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and some of that news on the animation front is, of course, you know, some images and some uh, more details that we're getting about the X-Men 97 series that is going to be coming out on Disney+. Plus. And in that X-Men 97 series, we all remember that Jubilee was sort of the, you know, glue to the uh, narrative of that show. You know, we saw the X-Men through her eyes, and it definitely feels like she's going to be a main character with the return of the X-Men 90 series. On top of all that, it feels like Marvel is currently doing sort of an X-Men 92 uh, resurgence in the comic book front, and it does feel like Jubilee is going to be a main player in that. So a lot of factors are leading to people thinking about the character of Jubilee once again. Who knows what's going to happen with this character in the future if when we get the X-Men, are we actually going to see a live action version of Jubilee? I mean, in my opinion, when we think about the Fox franchise, it always feels like Jubilee is sort of that 11th person on the roster. You know, they can never quite quite make the starting squad, the starting basketball team. And so, you know, we're always building to her at some point in the future, but, you know, we rarely ever get to her in that future. So it'll be interesting to think if she makes the cut. I mean, there's so many great X-Men characters that Marvel Studios needs to bring onto the screen that, you know, I, I don't know if Jubilee is going to make it, but definitely she is a character that has a core fan base, especially coming off the X-Men 97 show. And it'll be interesting to see how this book moves in correlation to that show. But as we dig into the numbers for this one. Let's take a look at some of the values here. There's actually one 9.9 on the census. Very interesting to see that there is, uh, but let's focus on the 9.8s. 1,104. Fair market value suggests to be 280. 30 day moving kind of right in line to that 284. Uh, but this is definitely one of those books, you know, because it's a Copper Age book that has had a massive correction uh, coming off of 2021. I mean, you could see that steep decline for this book. I mean, this is something similar that we saw with X-Men 266 and New Mutants 98. I mean, there's just too many copies out there for it to be able to maintain a proper floor value. But if we do see her make her way into the animated series, it will be interesting to see where this book would settle. I mean, I would say 
that if you're a fan of Jubilee, uh, this seems like a really good entry point considering that the values that it's selling for now are similar to that of the values that it was selling for in 2020. So it definitely seems like a good time to buy this book. And then of course, you know, at the bottom, not going to see too many low grade slabs uh, for a 1989 book, but when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, typically you can find them being sold around that 40, 50, $60 range, depending on the deal and depending on the grade. All right, let's move on now to the hottest trending comic of the week. And the hottest trending comic of the week is almost no surprise here, but this one right here is Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number one, up 19 spots, now sitting in the number three spot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1984, written by Jim Shooter, that would feature the first issue of the first crossover event in Marvel comic books, otherwise known as Secret Wars. Now, of course, at San Diego Comic Con, we got that exciting exciting announcement that the current saga is the multiverse saga and what we're ultimately building to is Avengers Secret Wars. And so for that reason, a lot of people are excited about seeing all the events of the Secret Wars miniseries that will maybe play out in that particular film. Of course, in 1984, Jim Shooter brought together this uh, series right here, which was Secret Wars, you know, where we had the Beyonder bringing the heroes against the villains. And it was a very, very fun series, but it definitely feels like, you know, a lot of what Marvel is going to adopt is going to be the 20. 15 Secret Wars, but that didn't stop a lot of comic book collectors from jumping onto this book. Definitely a lot of the Secret Wars books have been moving in the market, but in my opinion, this one right here is sort of the coolest one to own. It's the most nostalgic, at least for me. Uh, so I really understand why people want to jump on this thing. And it'll be interesting to think about, you know, where the values are now and what they're selling for, uh, what those values will look like when we eventually get Secret Wars. But speaking of those values, as we dig into the numbers, let's take a look at them here together. There is also one 9.9 .9 on the census for this particular book, but the 9.8s have 1,200 and 10. Fair market value suggests to be 650. 30 day moving, you can see, is actually 774. So, 30 day moving, definitely a lot higher than what the one year moving for this particular book was. And we did see some massive, massive sales that basically rival that of what we got, you know, for the peak sales in 2021. You could see a couple four figure numbers here. Here's a slash price of 1200. Here was a 1050 price right here. Here was a $1,200 uh, sale for this thing, a 1048, another 1000. So, when we got the announcement of Secret Wars, this is a book that that shot up from the $479 level, basically doubled overnight into that $1,000 range. Back in 2021, we were seeing sales around the $780, $800 level. So this is definitely a book that has set its all-time record high due to this announcement. And I think that's definitely an interesting sign when we talk about the state of the market. I mean, FOMO is a hell of a drug, even more powerful than the fear that comes with the state of the recession, uh, because even though we are kind of in a market where comic books are having a lot of pullbacks and a lot of corrections, you know, if the, if the news is out there and there's excitement for a particular movie or a particular book, you know, those people still definitely jump on that thing. We're seeing record sales for that one. So it will be interesting to think about where the floor values uh, find themselves for that book, you know, say in six months time, because obviously we're a long way away from Secret Wars. And then of course, I forgot to mention, if you go onto eBay looking for raw copies, typically they sell around that 50, 60, 70 dollar range, depending on the deal, depending on the grade. But overall, I think Secret Wars is a great book. And that is GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next video.